let me tell you, I don't have to tell you this, of what a special day this is for Philadelphia, for Philadelphia gay news and all of the LGBTQ community. Being presented with a historical landmark means you've done something right. You've done something good. Am I right, Mark? Yeah, shake your head. Um, welcome to the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission's unveiling of the historical marker which celebrates the Philadelphia Gay News, a publication that has and continues to give not only important, but at times life-saving information to the community for 45 years. And I must tell you a little something. Mark Siegel, he, he wrote me an email about two weeks ago. I was in the middle of a workout in my basement, and it, my phone pings, and I see it's from him. He goes, now it's my turn to ask for a favor, because I had him on like kind of a town hall with me a few weeks ago. And he said, before, he goes, I, was, I want to ask you to be an MC for today's event. I would love for you to be there. And before I even finished reading the email, I screamed to myself out loud, yes. And I immediately wrote him back, and I'm truly honored to be with you and all of you today. And I want to start by recognizing some of our allies that are present here today with us. And I want you to please refrain from applause until the end of the last ally's name because there's a long list here. And this is a good thing that the ally list is as long as it is. Judge Dan Anders, U.S. Senator Bob Casey, Judge Dan Clifford, City Commissioner Lisa Dealey, City Councilman Alan Dom, Judge Abby Fletman, President Judge Idy Fox, City Councilman Derek Green, City Councilwoman Helen Jim, City Representative, and a friend of mine, Sheila Hess, State Representative Mary Isaacson, Judge Chris Malados, Malleus, sorry. I was like, it's like dos, os. City Councilman David O, City Councilwoman Sherelle Parker, State, State Senator Christine Tartaglione, State Senator Anthony Williams, Philadelphia Sheriff Rochelle Bayel. I hope I said that right. Bayel. Bilal. Bilal. My apologies. Former Congressman Bob Brady. And that's it. And I heard Councilman Mark Sweeney just walked in as well, too. Here. Sweely. Sweely. Swell up. As you can tell, I do not read for a living, I ad lib. <laughs> and I do the weather, which I couldn't really get the sun to shine today, but anyway. Uh, Visit Philadelphia is today's prime sponsor. They have a very important job, and that's to bring visitors to our great city. They have a close tie to diverse and multicultural programs, so today's sponsorship really hits home for both of us. It's a great tie. And put simply, Philadelphia wants visitors from every segment of society, including our community. If you do not know, their LGBT motto is, get your history straight and your nightlife gay. Sign me up. Please welcome Michael Numis, Chief of Staff at Visit Philadelphia. Thank you, Adam. This is a crowd full of love. Uh, it's really incredible to see everyone here. What I love most about Philadelphia is that we are proud and passionate people. And we ought to be, because all of our historic achievements have really been forged by our very own homegrown heroes. And today, Visit Philadelphia is so excited to support this historic recognition of our homegrown hero, the Philadelphia Gay News Team. Under the leadership of one of our greatest ambassadors, Mark Siegel, Philadelphia Gay News has built an incredible legacy of really amplifying LGBTQ plus voices uh, within our community. And that's a community that Visit Philadelphia has proudly championed and invited to visit our city day after day through our multicultural marketing initiatives. Uh, Mark, on behalf of uh, all of us at Visit Philadelphia, uh, including Jeff Gorsito, congratulations for this incredible recognition. Congratulations to the incredible Philadelphia Gay News team and congratulations, Philadelphia. Thank you. And I was just told we have State Rep Joe Holenstein who has showed up as well, so thank you for being here with us. 
State Senator Nikhil Saval formerly was a writer. Uh, he published in the New York Times, The New Yorker. He authored the books including Cubed, which is a secret history of the workplace. Ooh, I want to know that. He's not here. Who told... Do you want to speak on his behalf? He's here. He's here. Oh, Mark just said you're not here. <laughs> He's over there, Mark. He's hiding. Uh, a progressive, and then he also came to Philadelphia, and when he did, he was one of the founders of Reclaim Philadelphia. It's a progressive organization working for racial, gender, as well as economic justice in all of Philadelphia. He became a ward leader, and then in 2020, elected to the Pennsylvania Senate. So please welcome Senator Saval. Thank you so much. It's uh, again, I'm Nikhil Saval. It's a real honor to be here with with uh, for this you know momentous occasion. Um, I, you know, I just I think as a journalist, I mean, one of the things that appeals to me about the history of PGN is just the sheer grit and and determination that it took to get there. I mean, if you you know before PGN, um, as Mark recounts in his amazing book, there was the Gazette. Uh, I don't know if people still have copies of that floating around, but we should, you know, we should be memorializing that. And then, you know, starting the newspaper, starting the, um, starting the, uh, the bins where they sold the newspaper, selling the newspaper in order to get lumber, to build the facilities, all of this goes into making a newspaper. All of this is what it takes, and, and ultimately this, all of this is in service of community news, of delivering news for a community, breaking news, and breaking news for people that are in it, people who need to know. And this was news that was not being broken before, is still not being broken before. Um, so it just, it's an incredible achievement. Um, it is, of course, I think, I, I imagine this would be true for Mark, uh, a little bit odd to be have a historical marker Journalism is not history. Journalism is the first draft of history. Journalism makes news. Journalism is, is, about, is about making history. But nonetheless, it is an incredible honor. I mean, it's, it doesn't mean that anything is going to stop. It doesn't mean that anything is going to change. It doesn't mean that people aren't gonna be, you know, worried when Mark picks, picks up the phone and with a, with a breaking story to confirm a story. I mean, I think all of this is still gonna keep happening, but it is just a wonderful achievement. And so I just wanna congratulate Mark. I wanna congratulate PGN. Um, real honor to be here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. And now we move on to someone who I think we all know as well. Um, Council Member Mark Squilla, who represents this district, has been a supporter of the LGBTQ community since entering Council in 2011. One of Mark's mottos, which I read, is bringing together the best of each community by knowing strong families and engaged neighborhoods that they are the key to our future and success. So please welcome our friend, Councilman Mark Squilla. Yeah. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Mark. This is a true honor to be here today, and what a privilege to be here in front of the, the first building where Philadelphia Gay News was really be able to be born. And what people don't realize is that, you know, before Mark Siegel was uh, writing in the newspaper, um, he was being uh, carried away, and whether it was a police car outside the uh, Independence Hall <laughs> or in city council chambers uh, being lifted away by uh, then uh, Sergeant at Arms, but now uh, Congressman Brady uh, carried out of councilman, uh, council members' chambers. So that activism led to what we have today. And it's so important to remember, it's always remember to, it's important to remember the institutional knowledge that we have and the people who came before us because they allow us to stand on their shoulders. And if, what's amazing today when you see all the elected officials that are here, whether they're city officials, state or federal officials, they all were touched by Mark Siegel and the PGN and the Gay News because they were able to see things in a different light. And Mark never asked for forgiveness about what he wrote. He wrote about the facts and what he believed to be happening at that time. And what we as elected officials see that by Mark Siegel being able to do that enabled other people to be able to come to become leaders of this society today. The other people became council members, became judges, became state reps and, and state senators. And we, we, it's important for us as elected officials, no, we cannot do that with the leadership of people like 
Mark Siegel, and also the better half, Jason, I must say, because, uh, <laughs> you know, beside every leader, there's somebody that allows them to be that leader. And uh, Jason, we thank you for allowing Mark to be part of our lives and sharing him with us because this is a great important day and it is a historical marker that's designated by the state, but it's also something we in Philadelphia need to be proud of and we need to continue this legacy to be able to be able to reach out, to be able to talk, to be able to lift people up so that all people are equal and all people have a voice. So Mark, you gave us that voice. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I can't wait to unveil this historical marker. Thank you. Thanks, Councilman. And our next guest in her former life, and when they wrote former life, I was like, well, it's still her current life, but it was before what she's doing right now. Uh, she was an award-winning author whose books and articles explored the stories behind iconic culture treasures and provocative if issues. She was appointed by Governor Wolf, chair of the commission in 2016. Please welcome chairwoman of the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, Nancy Moses. It is so exciting to be here today and to be among so many um, wonderful people on such a brilliant occasion. I'm here representing Governor Wolf and my fellow members of the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission, and I'm honored, thank you, to dedicate this official Pennsylvania historical marker for the Philadelphia Gay News. So let me give you a little bit of background on the marker program. It's been in existence for about 100 years, and only 2,600 markers have made it through the rigorous process. Your uh, marker dedication uh, nomination was one of the best I've ever seen. Insightful, thorough. <laughs> Thank you for that. I didn't do it. <laughs> so let me tell you what kind of company you're in. There's Fred Rogers from Ligonier, uh, Nellie Bly, a brilliant crusading investigative journalist from Armstrong. August Wilson, who won two Pulitzer Prizes. He's a playwright and he's from my city, Pittsburgh. Muhammad Ali's training camp up in the Poconos. Uh, Ethel Waters from Chester County and the Warner Brothers First Theater which opened in 1909 in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. There were, in fact, Warner Brothers. <laughs> we have a rich and diverse history here in Pennsylvania. And to my mind, one marker stands out that I'd like to tell you about. And it placed, because it places the Philadelphia Gay News in historical perspective. It stands on the corner of 3rd and St. James Street about a mile from here. And it commemorates the printing of the first edition of Common Sense. Now, how's everybody's history? You remember what Common Sense was? Right. Thomas Paine, these wonderful, very important pamphlets that were printed, uh, printed here in Pennsylvania, here in Philadelphia, that set the stage for the American Revolution. It argued for a Republican form of government under a written constitution. It legitimized the revolution. It showed it was possible. It showed it was real and necessary. It created a, a shared sense of purpose. It showed individuals they were not alone in this risky business. Common sense even pressured the rebellion's leaders to declare independence, to go one step beyond. I think that Philadelphia Gay News carries on this tradition, the tradition of common sense, because like the revolutionary broadsides, PGN forges consensus. It sheds light on some of the most concerning and pro biggest problems of our time. It spurs people to action. The Philadelphia Gay News chronicles your community, but it also shaped it. Some might, might argue that the Philadelphia Gay News only serves the LGBTIQ community, 
but you and I know better. We know that the Philadelphia Gay News is a Pennsylvania treasure, that it continues to serve as a role model for others across the nation. For everything you have done, for everything you have written, isn't just in service of your community, it's in service of us all. We also know that excellent and fearless journalism can change lives. I know it changed the life of one man that I met yesterday. He came here when he was 20 years old, fresh out of college. He arrived in Philadelphia in the middle of the AIDS crisis. He told me that Philadelphia Gay News was a godsend. It told him the truth about the disease. It told him where to turn for information and help. Most importantly, the Philadelphia Gay News made him feel for the first time safe and proud to be gay. So this official Commonwealth of Pennsylvania historical marker is not just for us today. It is a legacy for all of our future. Now, you and I can imagine a day 20, 50, or even 100 years in the future when another young man or woman, fresh out of college, will stop here, read this marker, learn about the origins of the Philadelphia Gay News, and find new inspiration and connections. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful words of what that plaque really means. And now finally we get to the man of the hour, the man I call of many hats and talents, uh, our final speaker in the unveiling. And if you don't mind for just one quick second, a story. Uh, I met Mark back in 2019. It's hard to believe that it was that long I've been in Philadelphia that we first met. It was at the Philadelphia Gay Pride Parade that we covered on Channel 6. He was one of our guests. Um, and it was such an honor to be in his presence. I knew of him, read about him, and he was everything and more that I could have ever imagined when he stepped into that booth. He was loud, he was enthusiastic, he was proud, and he was real. There stood a man who fought for our community even a decade before I was born. A leader, a hero in my eyes. And I'll never forget the handshake we had, and he uttered the words to me, I am so proud of you, and I thank you for everything you're doing for the LGBTQ community. But then I said to him, I uttered back, it's because of you, and it's because of so many others that I have a blessed life, and that I have a voice and confidence to express it and expose it. Never mind you, it took me 37 years to actually come out and so thank you, Mark. So you're a lot braver than me. Um, now to Mark. With journalism in his blood, he used his creative mind to change the way America looks at the LGBT communities. He's a true activist. He was there for the Stonewall Riots, one of the original founders of the Gay Liberation Front. He created a gay youth program, founder and former president of the Philadelphia Gay Newspa Newspaper Guild and the founder publisher of Philadelphia Gay News at this very spot 45 years ago. And with that said, can we please bring him up here to celebrate, honor, and unveil history. I feel like I want to change this after what they said, but... I won't. Um, now that you've, all of you have said something, I don't need to say anything more, um, but, I, but I will. <laughs> um, I want to uh, reiterate, um, I wouldn't be here today unless I had someone backing me up every single day and pushing me to continue no matter what happens. Um, so I want to thank my husband, love of my life, Jason. I also want to thank the committee that did this. Um, without my knowledge, this was 
a total surprise to me. Um, it includes two former editors of Philadelphia Gay News, Sarah Belusky and Jen Collada, who is here today with her son Jackson somewhere. She's back there. Uh, Judge Dan Anders, Jeff Garcino, uh, Clay Fennell. Um, they did this, presented that uh, application, which I knew nothing about, uh, which Nancy just said was one of the best they received. Um, not my work, Nancy. Uh, uh, thank you all for that. Uh, it was a shock. Okay, so here's my story. I left Philadelphia in May of 1969. At that time, there was nothing but bad times for gay men and lesbian and will women in Philadelphia. There was no dream or possibility of a future. That's why I went to New York. Who would have expected that six weeks later, I'd be involved with the foundation of what is LGBT's history, Stonewall? Hey, I'm from Philadelphia. We know revolution. I came back here in 1971. Uh, I didn't know quite what I was gonna do. I came back because my mother was ill and my father had asked me to come back to help. Um, but my father did say, key words here, you can continue to do what you're doing. My parents were gay activists. They supported me in all that I could do. I'm very lucky that I had parents who were supportive and I wish that for everyone. So I did what I believe was right, which was look for visibility of our community. Uh, that visibility took me to disrupting TV shows, um, handcuffing myself to the Liberty Bell, chaining my neck to the United Way building, and a few other things. Then, in 1975, actually, we started working on Philadelphia Gay News. First issue came out in January 1976. That building right there, 233 South 13th, was our first office. At that time, this neighborhood did not look as well as it did. Uh, that building was a redevelopment authority building. We couldn't afford an office, so the redevelopment authority gave us that building for $50 a month. Now, it doesn't look the way it does now. Um, it was in the back, the back half of it was all torn down. So we had the front as an office. Uh, there was no plumbing, so we had jars in the basement. Um, when it rained, it rained in the building. Um, and one night, uh, some of the homophobic neighbors in this neighborhood uh, decided to break into the building and tear out the electricity. Through all of that, we were gonna continue, we're gonna fight. Um, at this moment, there's one person in this audience, just one, who's going on that entire road with me. Since day one, he's been a member of PGN. Um, I'd like to single him out. Don Pinolet, where are you? Don Pinolet. You don't get to speak. <laughs> Let's say hello. Yes. Hello. And I'll get down PGN is different from all other LGBT media in the nation. We were started by an activist. Um, and we pioneered a form of LGBT pioneering journalism. We've done some things in our 45 years uh, that most other LGBT newspapers didn't think of. We did a story about how trans people in our community were treated in 1978. The AIDS crisis, we covered that with a fervor. Sometimes people called us the Philadelphia AIDS News during that point. Some of our incredible coverage was the first inter interview with a man by the name of Dr. Fauci. We were the first newspaper to cover stories about a new promising drug, AZT. And I was re reminded just in the last couple of weeks that we are part of ending 
don't ask, don't tell. Um, in my den uh, hangs, the White House sent me a copy of that bill. It's called a red line version. It's one of 25 that Barack Obama signed. Um, and I have Patrick Murphy to thank him for that. We are the only Philadelphia newspaper of any kind that during these elections, we got to interview Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden. In fact, Hillary Clinton uh, wrote um, an op-ed specifically for PGN. Thanks to PGN, Pennsylvanians got marriage equality a year before the Supreme Court ruled. Thanks to PGM, there's a community center called William Wade Community Center. Here's something you might not know. Um, and Congressman, uh, I hope you're not offended by this. Um, uh, to create that building over there, um, we got an earmark for $300,000 from Congress. Lo and behold, uh, that was the first time uh, that the United States Congress ever issued an earmark for an LGBT project. The work on that building down the street, John C. Anderson, LGBT Friendly Community Center, uh, I'm sorry, apartment building, uh, started in the pages of Philadelphia Gay News with a column uh, called Pie in the Sky Project which everybody told me was totally crazy and couldn't be done. Um, part of the reason that was done with another person that's here today, uh, Senator Bob Casey. When we started out, not only did we have a building that didn't have electricity, didn't have plumbing, um, no mainstream journalism organization would accept us as members. Today, we are the most award-winning weekly in the state of Pennsylvania. Last year, we were the best weekly in the nation by the National Newspaper Association. Now, don't applaud me. I want, to, I want you to know who the people are that you should applaud. Um, would anybody who is currently a member of PGN staff or who has been a member of PGN staff please raise their hand? It is their journalism that got us there. So with that, what I want to say is um, I've gotten through this pretty well. Um, that 18-year-old boy, me, who left Philadelphia in 1969, that boy standing outside Stonewall, could have never dreamed of coming back to Philadelphia and having heard that list of public officials that were here today to honor something that is part of an LGBT community. I could have never dreamed that. Thank you all for being here. Well now it's time for the unveilings. I'd like to have all the members of the PGN staff to please come over to this side of the marker and our public officials to this side over here. We're gonna unveil this direction for any cameras and shots you want. We're going to be 